What's up guys? In this video we're going way back. Before we had these, before we had a welder, we're going back to hammers, drills, and saws. So this is basically an honor for 100,000 subscribers. We're going back to where we began with just making a wooden go-kart, no welding required, no major power tools. So let's get started. Floor it. <laughs> As you can see, we had a ton of fun making that cart. It was just super easy, uh, fun to take out. It really got us started into karting, and it really just taught us how to make stuff and how to build and drive go-karts. Now I'm going to show you guys what you need to get to build your very own wooden no-welding go-kart. First thing you're going to need are wheels and tires. We got all ours as a set, uh, already mounted and everything. And then one of your wheels is going to need to be a drive wheel. So we got a kit from Go Power Sports that comes with everything you'll need. And all the links to everything we bought for this cart will be in the description below. To power this thing, we got a Predator 212 engine from Harbor Freight. Uh, if you have the coupon, it's only $99, so it's a killer deal. If not, you can pick anything up off Craigslist, a bunch of pressure washer engines, anything with a horizontal shaft and a keyway should work. Okay, so you can sit in one place and you're not just always going forward, you'll need a clutch. So we just decided to use 40 chain and we got a 40 chain clutch right here. And then to mount all this stuff, you'll need a ton of hardware. So we'll have just a list of everything. You can pause the video if you need to, to look at everything. For the frame, we got two by six wood and a piece of plywood on top for, your, uh, for the seat and for the backrest. And since the wood won't be strong enough to hold the wheels and tires and drivetrain, we're gonna use something that resembles stop sign material to hold all our wheels and put the bolts through. And you'll, you can use any type of uh, thin walled square tubing and drill holes in it. I mean, use whatever is easiest for you. Finally, you need handlebars, a throttle and brake cable, and two grips. Now that you know everything you'll need, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is lay out your car. You're gonna to wanna to base it around the plywood. So the biggest thing that's gonna vary for people is how much leg room you're gonna have. So basically, this is all about sitting in a place that's comfortable for you to reach full lock to full lock with your feet. From there, you're gonna know where the end of the piece of the plywood is. So you're gonna to wanna to mark your wood and cut it. We decided to round up and make our frame six feet long. That way it's gonna be basically just, we have 18 feet of wood, so that'll make it really easy to just cut it into three sections. Now what we need to do is we can line up the first two by six we cut with the end of the plywood and then mark these two to fit only on the plywood section. It's funny how we use a square to measure the stuff up and then we just hit <laughs> it at the leaning tower up here. That's a crooked cut. Yeah. Yeah, let's finish the mission. Yeah, it's tucked under, so whatever. Yeah, we can work. Oh! <laughs> Ow! Oh! Dang it. <laughs> because the screws are barely long enough to go through all layers of the wood, we're drilling from the bottom up. That way it kind of just holds everything into place. So the main goal here is you want to butt up these two pieces of wood all the way against the side of the plywood and then you want this one to be right in the center. Okay, so we got all the screws on the top and now it's time to work on the steering. What we're doing is basically you're gonna wanna cut your main steering two by four so it's basically the same width as the rear so it doesn't look off-centered or anything like that. So we drilled a hole right in the middle and it's basically, gonna, you're gonna want a place that looks pretty good and just kinda, it really just depends on how you want the cart to look. You can put it anywhere you want. All right, so on the first rendition of this cart, we had a lot of problems with friction between these two, um, two pieces of wood. So what we're doing is basically at any point the center bolt contacts anything that's not the bolt, you're gonna wanna run two washers. That way it just kinda, it's metal on metal contact and it, it has a lot less friction than just the straight wood to wood. So this all just goes through like so. I'm all a bandsaw, just anything else. Definitely would be better, but we're just trying to use the most basic thing we have, so it's the hacksaw. Oh, 
Okay. Definitely not the cleanest could have made, <laughs> but it'll work. Hey, the good news is it's strictly structural. Yep. So all it really does is just where what you're gonna do is you're gonna drill two holes, one here and one here, and then you can bolt it up, and then you'll put two by two, and then you can run your five sixteenths bolt right through this middle hole right here. Slide your bolts through. And then your other side. And then uh, we recommend using lock nuts for everything. On the first rendition, we basically just like ended up replacing every bolt with lock nuts anyways. You would think that because it's wood, it wouldn't rattle as much, but it actually like everything kind of just got loose over time. I think it's because the wood stretches and stuff. So just keep that in mind. I'd use lock nuts. You're gonna wanna invest in a nice 5 ace drill bit because that's the size bolts we'd recommend using through these, the metal here. So when you're drilling through metal, you should probably always protect your eyes. Let's do it. You're gonna slide in your bolt. Fits really well because we use the drill bit that's pretty much perfect size for it. Then in our case, our rim kind of just slides on and fits perfectly. So if it doesn't fit and you need to space it out, you can definitely stack a bunch of washers and stuff, but keep in mind, you're probably gonna have to buy a bigger bolt. But if you stick with these rims and tires and blocks, these are like inch by inch square blocks and these tires, you'll be just fine. All right, our seat is done. Just two cut two by fours. We got some 90 degree angle brackets on the back, holding them up, keeping them sturdy. It's plenty strong. And then we're gonna do two pieces of bolt string so you don't slide off the sides when you go around a corner. Yeah, we might put Recaro out of business with this bad boy. Oh yeah. And you can really do this however you want. This is just how we're doing it. But you have creative freedom. You could angle the seat. You could put a seat you already have on there and just bolt it down. So go crazy with it. And the wheels. Oh man, Sweet. we're getting there. How's she gonna look? Oh, she's pretty lit. <laughs> oh man, these are way taller tires than Monster the truck. Look huh? at that turn though. Yeah, Formula D up in here, huh? Let's Honestly. take a seat. I mean, the front bolt isn't tightened, so the steering's a little bit more loose than it would be normally, but. Ah, oh, brings me back to the good old days. Good steering. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's totally functional. It's it would be really hard to do this any other way with tie rods and all that stuff, and it's a lot cheaper to do it this way. So for first projects, especially made out of wood, this is how I'd recommend doing it, and this is how we did do it. Okay, so we just finished up the front pieces, and now what we did was we flipped the frame over so we could get a look at where we want our back pieces to go for our back wheels. Really aesthetically, we kind of want it as far back as we can go without being overhanging off the back. Um, and then this way, when we mount our engine on the other side, we're gonna have some room to slide the holes forward and backwards before we hit this piece. So I'm gonna mount this, and then I'll see you guys again when we're doing the engine side, because that's the important side. All right, guys. So we got the last wheel on. And then just something to note. Um, see, I cut a little piece of pipe that fits perfectly over the bolt. You can either do that and use a hacksaw, or if you don't want to buy any of that material, you're going to stack a bunch of washers. It is eat cheaper to put use pipe, though. I'll include that in hardware, I guess. And yeah. now the drive wheel. We're just mocking up the little pieces of stop sign. And yep. Okay, so we just got a little piece of wood, put a kind of long bolt through it, and that was our brake mount. It's super simple, and then we'll have the cable going from the top, pulling it tight. All right, so we got a roller. Next step's the power plant. Time to bolt the engine up. A couple critical errors we made on the first rendition of this cart was our chain was like six feet long, and with 35 chain, it was like, I mean, it was just way too long. We kept throwing the chain all the time, especially because the wood flexed and all that. So my advice to you is make the chain as short as possible and try to have as much adjustment as you can to get the chain pretty tight. So what you're gonna do is good 
rule of thumb, you're just gonna straight edge, put it right up against your sprocket, and then that'll help you decide whether your sprocket's right on line. You want the clutch sprocket and the sprocket back here to be aligned as possible. Then you want your engine to be straight with the frame. And then we can, we'll mark these holes, drill them out, and then we'll see how far forward and how far back we can drill, we can widen them without hitting so. The idea of this is pretty simple. You just kind of drill one hole a little bit above the other one. And then what you're gonna do is you wanna just keep going through and just try to bore out until you get to the other one. It's only wood, so it shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> That's the prettiest, but it'll work. Now we're laying out our chain but an issue we have is the chain's a little bit too long, so we're gonna go through what you need to know to trim it. We're not gonna go super in depth, there's plenty of other videos about it, but basically, you want the two inside ends, so you want both ends to kinda look like this, that way you can fit a master link through it. So you kinda line it up to where it's semi-loose so where you can slide the engine forward and tighten it. You're gonna mark the pin that's on it, and then you can pull your chain out. Okay, so if you all have a chain breaker, that'd be ideal, obviously. But we're back to breaking chain the old fashioned way. So what I usually first do is hit the, the little part sticking out a little bit. Hit that flat, down flat with a hammer first. That kind of loosens it up a bit. Then after that, you'll take a punch, stick it down where the hole is. And there we go. And there you go, the chain is free. Oops, so now we're back to two pieces. There we go. Okay. So we got the chain on and then we just made our handlebar mounts. So with this, I mean, since it's just two cables, you can do whatever you want, any design you like, however you want it. But uh, this is what we chose and it's pretty strong. We will add a little bit of reinforcement. But after this, we're gonna get the handlebars on. All right, so this is kind of gives you an idea of how the brake should be set up. We had to move the block to up there, but it can really go anywhere. So, we're just tightening it up. Yeah. Oh, now all that's us to do is test drive this bad boy. Here we are. Ready? Taking her easy to see how it how it does. Like the good old days. Woo. We're here tightening the chain again. Hopefully it doesn't loosen or else we have some sort of flaw in our design. But I just think it wasn't tight enough to begin with. Now we're really tight. So, I don't know, trial and error is part of the deal. Bill break your feet, right? Yeah, and this thing still has a governor in it and all that, so she's, it's not gonna be a speed dimming or anything, but you could upgrade it, for sure. Not breaking any speed records, but it's a lot of fun, guys. Especially for like a first cart where you're just trying to learn how to drive something and all that. It's real fun. Oh, this thing, 
This thing steers really well. Actually, it's really smooth on concrete. Really? For some reason, it's kind of pushing me through the corners. Like, uh, we might have to figure out the idle or maybe the throttle cable is doing something weird. But other than that, like, pretty zippy. It's not like a speed demon, but it's definitely fun. Yeah. For something you can build yourself for a reasonable price out of wood, you know, yeah, it goes a, pretty good. It's the best you can get. Yeah. So, I, I definitely recommend it for a first project for sure. Yeah. how we started, so. Exactly. Look how we turned out, huh? <laughs> I think it's faster than Mayhem, actually. Really? I'm really not used to foot steering, though. It's kind of, it's it's new. Yeah. But yeah, it's super fun. I mean, I definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching. This is a super fun project, a great starter build, fairly cheap, really fun, and you can really get your hands dirty with not having to buy a bunch of expensive tools or anything like that. And that being said, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Go Power Sports. Everything we use except for the wood is from Go Power Sports. So that's awesome that you can build a starter cart just from their parts. And uh, stay tuned if you want to see some little mods of this thing, and we'll see you next time.